Welcome to Design 30. My name is Jason Bilyeu, and in this podcast, I provide design strategies and tools to improve creativity, innovation, and overall design confidence. So this weekend, I did a lot of driving, and that has inspired this episode. Um, There was one very simple experience I had, uh, but it was an experience that I think illustrates a couple design principles pretty well. And so I think it's it's worth diving into a little bit in this episode. Uh, Before we get into that, as always, please subscribe to the podcast. Please share it with anyone who you think would benefit from it or enjoy it. And of course, if you want more design content, you can subscribe to the Design 30 YouTube, as well as become a subscriber to the Design 30 Substack. Okay, so uh, this was yesterday, actually. I was driving south on a highway and approaching an interstate, as you know, we, uh, you often do when you are on long road trips. And so I'm driving south and the interstate's running from east to west or west to east. And I want to go east, right? So usually if you're heading south and you want to head east, you expect to get over into the left lane. So as I'm driving up, I merge over to the left lane well in advance, just making sure that I had plenty of time to turn left and get onto the interstate entrance. It was a bit of a busy weekend. Um, It is Montana, so it's never really that busy, but for Montana, it was busy, right? So I merge over into the left lane and I'm coming up to where I expect this uh, interstate on-ramp to be. And as I'm coming up, I look up at the sign and it has the city I'm heading towards and it's pointing the opposite direction. So this city is east but it says to get there, I need to go west, right? And immediately uh, it it just throws off kind of my whole groove. You know, when I'm driving, I usually get into a groove. Um, I don't know, you kind of get in the zone in a way and this just throws it off. I panic slightly. I have to cut all the way across traffic again to try and make it to this interstate on-ramp. And so I look, double check, check my blind spot, and swerve over luckily (laughs) everything went well didn't hit anybody but quickly have to swerve over to make this on-ramp and get to where i want to go of course it's the end of a long weekend you you don't want to miss your turns you want to get home tired hungry all all those things and as soon as i swerve over to this on-ramp i just start immediately like i think most of us would just start blaming myself oh man every time I've, i've made this drive I do it multiple times a summer, right? So it's it's an exit that I should, or an entrance to the interstate that I should know. I should, by now, I definitely should understand that, you know, if I want to head east in this specific location, I need to be in the right lane and turn west initially. And this on-ramp swoops around and eventually does bring you back heading east. Uh, so I just start blaming myself right away Like, why do I always make the same dumb mistake? Like every time we come to this point, it was me and my wife driving in the car. Every time we do this, I'm always in the wrong lane and I always have to swerve over real quick or I miss it. And we have to drive down a couple miles, flip around, come back. And so immediately just going to this, like, ah, then this, I always do the same stupid thing. But then I realized like, well, what? Okay. If I'm always doing the exact same thing, there's probably reasons for that probably a lot of reasons for that and some of them obviously uh, or might seem a bit obvious right if you want to head east you usually turn towards the east and if you want to head west you usually turn towards the west right so there's just this expectation of how these things are supposed to work you usually don't turn west to head east or east to turn west Um, and especially in these small towns in montana where i live you don't have these crazy road systems and uh, all sorts of turns and curves. And especially with interstates, usually almost always very straightforward. 
uh, all of your entrances and exits are almost uh, not identical, but very, very similar for the most part. So it's usually very straightforward. There's this very consistent conceptual model that I have, I think most people have, uh, of how the interstate works in Montana. When you want to turn, if you're heading south and you want to turn east, you need to make sure you're in the left lane because that's going to be a left turn to get onto the on-ramp. And if you're heading south and you want to turn west, then you're going to be in the right lane and you're going to turn right there, right? So there's a very simple conceptual model that 99, maybe 95% of the time it is always right, at least in Montana. I know in bigger cities, uh, you have to be much more on your toes and there's on-ramps and off-ramps all over the place and you're twisting and turning. And I'm not so used to that sort of thing. I've definitely done my fair share of big city driving. But as of late, having, uh, well, growing up in Montana, now living in Montana again, I have a pretty good conceptual model of how all this works. And it's almost always right. But in this case, it was it was wrong, right? And there's also a, con- a cultural aspect to this as well, just... Again, growing up in Montana, in small town Montana, there's these cultural conventions of how these things work. And that's one of them, just how you exit the interstate, how you enter the interstate. There's just a cultural aspect to it that we're all used to. Uh, We don't have to be uh, always on our toes and making sure that we're checking all of the different exits and getting the right exit number. I mean, there's times where, I mean, the one time that probably is necessary in Montana is there isn't that many exits. So if you do miss your exit on the interstate, sometimes you're driving another 20, 30 miles before you even get to an exit or any other sign of life, (laughs) essentially any other small town. So that's about the only, like probably the biggest mistake you can make on the interstate in Montana. But there's definitely this just cultural convention that is it's just ingrained in you as you start driving, right? It's not something that's necessarily verbalized. It's not something that's necessarily talked about. It's just something that you get used to as you drive. And along those lines, there's also this uh, design principle of consistency. And like I said, almost every other entrance to the interstate operates in this specific way, where if you want, again, you're heading south, you want to head east, you're going to be turning left. And you're heading south, you want to go west, you're going to be turning right. There's just a very consistent design and structure to how the interstate works. It's uh, Again, it's very simple for the most part. But every now and then, when it's not that way, when there is a simple change, and of course it was, it was clearly marked with signs, but I still make the same mistake almost every time I, I come to the specific uh, interstate entrance. And and I think I love how this just illustrates these different things that I I talk about a lot on this podcast about how users almost always blame themselves, right? If you keep messing up the same thing, you almost always look at yourself like, ah, why do I keep messing that up? Why am I being so stupid? I should know this by now. And and that's one of the things I love about this human, this concept of human centered design is as the designer, if your user is thinking that way, you shouldn't look at it as the user being dumb or stupid or not understanding your design. You should look at it as a bad design. That's something that needs to be improved, right? If, if it's not obvious, another thing I talk about a lot is or maybe not a lot, but I have mentioned it. I I tend to post it a lot, but if something needs a sign, I think that's, that's, it's, well, it's a sign of a bad design in a lot of ways. Um, And that's not, of course, not always true, but I think it's a really good standard to hold for yourself as a designer. It's like, if I have to put a label on this, I have to put a sign on this for people to be able to understand it. Maybe there's a better way I could actually design that understanding into the object itself. And and a lot of this is coming from the book, The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman. And he also talks about there's this uh, idea of you have knowledge in your head and there's also knowledge in the world. And so as a designer, if you can build that knowledge into the world, if you can build it into the design itself, where people don't necessarily have to think about it, 
they don't have to know exactly how this specific on-ramp works in this specific location in this random part of Montana, right? It's just, there's this design consistency. There's a, uh, a conceptual model that is consistent and there's cultural conventions that are held to, right? So you're almost, you're taking this knowledge of of how to get on the interstate and instead of embedding it into someone's head for every single different on-ramp that they might run into it's basically just built into the design itself this is how interstates work and so you don't as a user as a person driving you don't have to think about it that much it's just this is just the way it works so that's an example of how knowledge can actually be built into the world to where you don't have to have it in your head and like on the forefront of your mind. But then as soon as something changes from that, as I experienced yesterday, all of a sudden you are swerving across, well, okay, it wasn't that dangerous. I wasn't swerving across traffic, but I did have to make a quick swerve to make it to the on-ramp and I didn't cause a crash. Nobody was injured in the making of this podcast. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, and, and so as soon as that changes now all of a sudden you're kind of panicking you're having to make a a rash decision a quick decision which could you know if the conditions were worse obviously i probably wouldn't have made the same decision to swerve across traffic and make the on-ramp if the conditions were bad or if it was icy or anything like that but you could see how this would it could tend to cause accidents if people are expecting one thing and then last minute they realize their expectations were wrong they're going to make often, uh, well, not often, but more often than if it was uh, adhering to this consistent design that everyone's used to, you're more likely to cause a crash or some other bad outcome. So I think as a, you know, even if you're someone who designs traffic, if you're someone who designs roadways, you still need to adhere to these similar design concepts and design principles that product designers, Uh, will understand and adhere to that graphic designers are going to be thinking about. And so in this case, it's a perfect example of how you have this conceptual model of how a system works. There's this cultural aspect, this cultural consistency or convention uh, from growing up in small town Montana of how interstates work and how you get on and off them. And then there's also this idea of consistency And the design of these things is almost always the same. And so every now and then when it is different, in this case, the opposite of what you would expect, it it does throw you off and it, and it, it, and it could potentially cause problems, especially somewhere where the road conditions, like in Montana, half the year, the road conditions can be terrible, right? You need to be very careful with those sorts of changes, those sorts of uh, breaks in consistency. And finally, it's also, a, it was a perfect example, just illustrated to myself of something that, you know, it, it's not necessarily bad design, right? Like this ramp, this on-ramp still gets you onto the interstate, no problem. There was signs that, that marked it, but immediately, as soon as I was in the wrong lane and had to make a quick correction, I blame myself. And this is exactly what Don Norman talks about in the design of everyday things is users almost always blame themselves. If they do it wrong, they think it's their fault. And so as a designer, you need to understand those situations when people are going to uh, often or potentially make the wrong decision, they're going to use something in the wrong way. And you should challenge yourself to design that out of the product, essentially make it so that it's so obvious, it's so consistent that the user isn't going to have, well, in this case, the user isn't going to make the same mistake over and over again. So this isn't the first time I've done this. <laughs> it's almost every time I come to the specific entrance, you'd think I'd figure it out again, but I haven't. And I think that's a, that's a great example of how the design of something can impact your user experience. And I, in that case, had a poor user experience and luckily did not get in to any sort of accident or cause any problems but definitely had some uh some negative thoughts associated with it blaming myself but at the end of the day it did give me some good content uh, for this episode of the podcast so 
you know, maybe I should be happy about it. Maybe that's actually, no, just kidding. I'm not, not happy about it, but it is nice to, to, it was nice to have this example to illustrate these different ideas. And it was such, again, a perfect example of how when something doesn't adhere to what you expect, it doesn't adhere to the consistency that you've come to expect from the product, in this case, the interstate, uh, you can easily blame yourself, but then you can also dive a layer deeper and think about the design of this thing and why why is it so confusing? Why does it always throw you off? So yeah, I hope this was uh, kind of an interesting way to illustrate some of these design principles and something that we all have experience with, one of these everyday experiences of driving. Uh, and I thought it was a great way to to show what a conceptual model is, how you conceptually picture the interstate and how you get off interstates, how you get on interstates, um, these cultural things that can be embedded in you based on where you grew up. In my case, growing up in small towns in Montana and just the way these you know, interstate on-ramps work, how they almost always work, which again also plays into consistency. So that's all I have for this quick little Monday podcast. Uh, as always, I hope everyone is ready for another great week. And I hope that whatever you're working on, whatever design you're working on, whatever field of work you're in, that these principles of design are something that are useful and are improving the way you do your job, the way you do your work. With that, I'm going to leave it there. Remember, as always, to design more, despair less. Thanks for listening.